Spoilers and offensive content to come. We are Carlos and Dave, Anime Rave. We're also Two Fat Guys Talk. This is kind of an episode covering both titles right now. It's <laughs> Genres. It's, it's a Two Fat Guys Talk podcast, but we're going to be talking about some anime later. Where the hell have we been? I'll tell you where we've been. We've been watching Summer of Gaming. Dave, what did you think of Summer of Gaming and the various showcases? And you know what? Fuck them. They're all at showcases. What in them captured your eye the most? Well, you know something? This year's wasn't actually all that impressive. There was a few standouts, but really, I almost miss old E3. <laughs> I think there was something impressive in most of them. Uh, like, there were definitely more than I thought there would be. I only watch these because I, I kind of like the spectacle of them, even if I yep. don't play a ton of what they show me. But this one, this one showed me some games that I didn't think I was going to like at first until we saw um, until we saw what uh, what the game itself was all about, and maybe the most the biggest example of that for me was Claire Obscure Expedition Thirty Three, because that game at first it started like with this big narrative thing, and at first I'm like, oh god, here's another narrative experience by some uh, f- failed filmmaker who just turned to video games because they couldn't make films, but then I'm like, hey, hang on, that's Clive's voice from FS Sixteen. This world looks kind of neat. Why does the combat look like Legend of Dragoon meets Octopath Traveler in a triple-A Western-developed JRPG package? But excuse me? Yep. That was maybe the game of the whole show for me. The whole... All the showcases, the one that captured me the most was Expedition 33, I think. Up until Nintendo's thing here recently? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, I I don't know what it was this year, but Outside of some of the small indie titles and the surprise ones, there just wasn't much there that interests me. There, like Expedition Thirty Three, is one that really did. Um, Wander Stars was another one. That was that anime. Um, choose your <laughs> yeah, the one where girl Goku goes on an anime exactly, adventure and you choose words to do attacks. Uh, we got a couple of, of neat sky, side scores that they're coming out, like the G.I. Joe and the Power Rangers ones. Uh, yeah, the G.I. Joe one, it it probably plays fine. I remember being a little underwhelmed with how it looked. The Power Rangers one looks and sounds really good mm-hmm. and seems like it plays well. As long as they play well, that's all that really matters. Exactly. Well, I do want them to look good, too. But yeah, I mean... Ubisoft showed me nothing of interest, but that I, doesn't surprise me. It's Ubisoft. I had that in the background. Some of their Prince of Persia stuff was interesting, but that was it for me, really. Yeah. I, I own the most recent Prince of Persia on PlayStation, simply because I didn't want to get on PC and have to install the Ubisoft launcher again. That's the Metroidvania, yep. uh, the Lost Prince. Yeah. Yeah, that's getting new DLC, and they're roguelike, which... Uh, I've heard, I have on good authority is really good, is also getting new uh, new content to it as well, so. Okay. And the remake of Sands of Time, I know that's a fan favorite game for a lot of people. Me, me included. I mean, that was back in, during Ubisoft's heyday. Like, yeah. Like, the Sands of Time trilogy was fantastic. Lately, my my take on remakes is that some of them I've liked, like I've liked Mario and RPG, mm-hmm. Mario and RPG, Mario RPG remake. Um, but I'd rather have sequels over remakes yes, and just have older titles be available on newer platforms, preferably for cheap or free from a video game preservation standpoint. Yeah. But I mean, I'll probably take a look at a sense of time remake. Mm-hmm. The Nintendo side had a bunch of them like, Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. We had a whole new Zelda game. A sequel to Phantom Brave. A game my brother played to death. I didn't even know there was a sequel to Phantom Brave being considered. Because I thought it wrapped up. Yeah. But no, there's a sequel to Phantom Brave. Uh, the Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics title. With brand spanking new Marvel vs. Capcom artwork, which su- suggests bigger things for that franchise. And you know. having rollback-enabled versions of all these games is just a plus. Yep. Uh, no Xbox version, though. I, as someone who doesn't have an Xbox, I, I I don't really care, but I hope our Xbox friends get that rectified. I read it had something to do with still the Sony having the Spider-Man license, but mm-hmm. 
still though, that was a surprise. I, I didn't yell as loud as Maximilian Dew did, but I certainly <laughs> was very surprised when I saw that. As a fan of Metroid Prime 1 and someone who didn't really like 2 and 3 but thought there were okay parts in it, I'm really looking forward to see what Metroid Prime 4 has to show us. Yes. I hope in the timeline it takes place after Dread, but I doubt that's going to be the case. Because mm-hmm. I do want to see what happens after Dread as well. But uh, yeah, uh, the Nintendo Showcase showed a lot of cool stuff. Oh, the Nintendo Showcase was the best showcase, A, that Nintendo has ever done. <laughs> and just blew any of their showcases from, from Summer of Gaming out of the water. Yeah, I, I don't really look at who the winner or loser is, though, because they're Me, all... the gamers were the winner. All the sh- These are all at showcases by big, evil, multinational corporations. That's, that's ultimately why I, I stopped cheerleading for them, because that, that's just fandoming. I just want to see cool games that I might want to play or that I know friends of mine might want to play. So, Oh, there's a new Bubsy collection being made. God. And a new Gex collection. Bubsy and Gex are back-ish. And, and speaking of wasting money, <laughs> God. I, I, I don't I, get uh, how those are being launched as a, as a package, but I, hey, I'm looking forward to the next Mario Party, so what am I to say? I will argue that the, the the Bubsy games are bad games. None of them are more than a couple of degrees away from being great. They just needed a few knobs fiddled. Absolutely. Yeah. We have another topic we wanted to talk about, because we started having a conversation about this. I'm like, I yeah, know I have my mic with us. Yep. With me, so like we could just talk about it. I've been watching a lot of uh, anime and uh, other animation and series and whatnot and live-action stuff, and reading a lot of manga and comics. And I've been thinking a lot, Dave, about pacing and the length of things. And this comes mainly from the fact that X-Men 97 uh, had a very fast pace that I actually really appreciated, because it got wrapped up in one season what other other creators might have taken multiple to do. And I really appreciated that we didn't have to wait that long to get resolution. And I know some animes are like this as well. Like, I brought up uh, some trigger stuff like Kill a Kill is really well-paced, in my opinion. But then, you know, a lot of anime and a lot of manga and a lot of storytelling in general, even shows that I've liked, like Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, they're just slow. And they're not always slow in a way I find interesting. They're slow in a way where I'm like, get on with it already. And then we started talking about pacing. And in general, I like faster pacing, but I think it's more complicated than that. What do you think of pacing and the speed of which these stories are told and the the things that these storytellers dedicate to showing us and how necessary they are? Well, I think, number one, the moment you start talking pacing, you also have to start talking about what genres you're jumping into. Because if you're jumping into, say, a slice of life, I can't think of a single slice of life anime I've ever watched that I could call breakneck. <laughs> I want a year to pass with every episode. Um, one of my favorite animes from the la- last year was Apothecary Diaries. Each episode is a slow build up to dealing with the pro- issue of the episode ki- kind of situation. Almost Scooby Doo ish in that way. But. Apothecary Diaries and Scooby Doo, a match made in heaven. They they're both problem solving mystery shows. And they both have someone un- getting unmasked at the end, <laughs> saying, "I would have solved, I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for this pesky apothecary." <laughs> Pretty much. And her poppy. Pretty much. It's just like shows like that. I can tend to have a lot more patience with being a much slower burn. Whereas other shows, like if Gurren Logon had gone on for, if they had changed it into a multi-season thing, that would have been a slow burn. It wouldn't have worked for that show. Same thing with Kill a Kill. Kill a Kill, I can't think of an episode we went into thinking there's no way you could top the last episode. But the reason those two shows really resonate with me is because they also didn't waste time. No. There is no time to waste. And I need to specify what I mean by wasting time. 
it's okay to indulge in some purple language. It's okay to indulge in a scene or two, which doesn't technically serve a purpose, but they show you a bit of world building or a little bit of char- a character insight, a little bit of body language, just to kind of get, tell you some subtle story. I think that's okay in moderation. When something just is pedantically just living in that slow storytelling space forever, it becomes annoying. What I mean by this is I love Hunter x Hunter. I love it to death. But manga or animated, as much as I love the Chimera Antark, it needed to be half the length. There are so many times when there's moments in episodes where they're just dragging longer than Namek and having the narrator cut in to explain things that... Oh, on top of that, instead of taking the time to let the subtext be explained through characters' actions and body language, then you have Tagashi's cut letting the narrator cut in and explain shit to me that I already figured out. Yeah. And I'm like, no, man, like, that's what I mean by, like, blisteringly slow. Like, if... If Kill the Kill was paced like Hunter Hunter's... Uh, Chimera Antark, or like the manga's current uh, Succession War arc, we would only now, in 2024, be getting the final season of Kill la Kill. If that was how it was being paced. And I would have been arguing, you know, that maybe this should have been resolved in one season. Mm-hmm. And X-Men 97 spoiled me. Even if I could have used one or two more episodes of that with Headmaster Magneto... That show, which, by the way, is incredible, and everyone should watch it, that show spoiled me for the fact that it, they didn't waste time. And it's not just about, you know, my time is valuable. No, it's not valuable. I'm sitting down and watching cartoons. No, it's about, like, it's about it's about pacing. It's about f- letting your story flow in a way that feels natural and, let, like, having a payoff come to what you set up instead of this slow hideous burn that just makes people give up on your fiction halfway through. And I, th- I think how the whole conversation started is I was bringing up that they, they're they bringing out a new version of Ranma after all these years. Yeah, and I mentioned I hadn't seen Ranma ever of Ranma Half, mm-hmm. and you talked about how most of that show is filler, and I talked about how lately I consider most things and everything I watch filler, even the stuff that's not filler. Especially the stuff that's not filler. So I mean, I, I I can appreciate slower burn shows, but those shows still have to give me good stuff. It I don't I don't need breakneck neck pacing, but if you're gonna show me something in the show, make sure it's relevant and isn't just something that's going to be just, just leave my mind kind of stuff like. Again, going back to Apothecary Diaries, from episode one, there is stuff that they drop throughout the setting and through di- dialogue that matter throughout the entire show. Sure. Now, you, you expect that sort of thing, but a lot of shows, it's, it's kind of like, well, here's the episode of the day. Next episode, you really don't have to think too much about the themes or what happened the last episode. I want something to matter for the whole show, but it can't bore me, but I also don't mind taking the time. Like I will, a slice of life I expect to be a little bit slower of a of a pacing. But a shonen I expect a little more more breakneck ultimately. The worst. And I want to point out this is all subjective. Oh if yeah. You like slow you like slow paced shows, don't listen to me. Like go watch your slow paced uh the daily life of spring cleaning, school zone, whatever. Uh, the worst is when there's an action show like a shonen, and it's painfully slow. Like the the Namek saga and frees us five minutes taking 20 yeah. episodes. Fucking modern Dragon Ball does that. Dragon Ball Super's final half is the Tournament of Power arc. A lot of people think it's their favorite arc, even though it is the worst arc in all of Dragon Ball. It drags so long. It should have been it should have been twelve episodes max. I'm coming right out there and saying it. Maximum twelve episodes for this whole fucking arc. And, and, and it's 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 annoying because you know what's coming 
And yeah, I get that it, part of storytelling is building that anticipation within your audience so that there's a payoff. But when you build too much, now you're just teasing, and now it starts to feel like you're milking for time and views. It, it really feels like, well, got to wait till next week to get your payoff. And then uh, half of that episode is going to be the recap of this episode. Like, yeah, it's the worst when a shonen does it. And it's great when shonens don't engage in that shit. Like, we're watching one right now called Kaiju Number 8. Arguably not even a shonen. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I thought, Kai, like, Kaiju Number 8 takes its time to show the world, build the world, show character interactions, especially when it comes to our main character, Kafka, and his, uh, uh, his age-related kind of fatigue versus the new transformation into a kaiju he has. But I wouldn't consider that show badly paced at all. I no. think it's paced very well. No. My Hero Academia has waft between the two extremes. Mm. There are some arcs that get done nice and quick, and there are some arcs that should have been resolved 20 mangas ago. You can't be talking about the final battle, can you? Sorry, 40 mangas ago. God. Yeah, I... <sighs> I understand the thought of making all these cool battle scenes. You know, you, you want to tell the entire story from multiple viewpoints and make sure that everybody gets their shot in and everything else. But my God, get to the point. Yeah, it, when it starts to feel like you, you're just keeping my attention to keep my attention, mm -hmm. then it starts to feel like when MMOs do that thing where they have content just to keep you logging in and not content that's good. It feels like you're trying to just game us with attention, and I hate that. That's why I like shows like uh, uh, Senki Zesho Simpho Gear. And at the time, I remember thinking, you know, I needed more episodes in each season. In retrospect, no, nah, man. 12 to 13 every episode, every season was enough for that show. They didn't need more. There wasn't enough for more. It would have just been wasting time if they did that. But then you have other things where I kind of think they needed more time. Like, uh, X-Men 97 is almost perfect in that regard. I think we needed one or two more episodes of Magneto being a hero to really make what happens in the last few episodes have even more of an impact. Although, even without that, they still had a very big impact. And that show is still one of the best things that Marvel has done in years and years. So everyone should watch it. It's I know and I know this is hard. It's a subjective thing, man. I know there are probably some slower shows I'm watching right now that I'm not even thinking of. So well, I mean, as a reincarnated aristocrat, I'll use my appraisal skill to rise in the world. Terrible title. Holy shit! I hate anime titles so much. Uh, I mean, this show is a slow burn. Yeah, and it doesn't need to be because I've been reading the manga of this too, mm -hmm. and it is taking way too long. I I would argue that. You could prune two thirds of the manga chapters of this show, and probably two thirds of the episodes that we've seen too. That there's that much time just characters talking about and around Ars Levant, and I'm like, Christ, no, just get on with it. I don't need all this talk about war. All this talk about war just tells me that the writer doesn't understand war and strategy. Uh, and that's the thing. A lot of storytellers think they know about war and strategy, and they don't. It's the same problem Death Note has. The 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 writer of Death Note overestimates their intelligence because it's easy to tell how dumb they are by Death Note. So when they just kind of when they indulge in dialogue, the only thing I'm thinking of is you are nowhere near as smart as you think you are. And, and, and that's kind of what I get out of the show. I'm enjoying it enough to watch the show with you and to read the manga, but goddamn, I wish it would just get on with it. The New Gate is another one that mm -hmm. I wish would just get on with it already, man. Yeah, yeah. I, are you caught up on on the New Gate? Yeah, I think I am. Okay. Would you would you say that they, he definitely got better the further in he got? Like the, la the last couple arcs have been pretty breakneck. It's a little better, but in that in that story, it's almost it's almost antithetical to its urgency of him trying to find a way home that it's taking eight 
trillion years. This isn't Gilligan's Island. Find the way home! Like... I can't argue that. I mean... It, let's face it. In, in that manga slash show, I don't think that's even a possibility for him. I think he's stuck. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't... Uh, the particulars of that are probably beyond the scope of this podcast. But the point of it being about pacing, and it, it, it might have improved a little. Even though Alex Hirsch irks me these days, I think he made the right call ending Gravity Falls when he did. He outright said Disney asked him to do more. They asked him for more seasons of Gravity Falls. What was he going to do? Keep them stuck in summer vacation land for five, six years? No, he was done the story. So he finished it. You could see a continuation years later down the line when they're older, but for now we're done. And he was right to do that. Like he, he, and that show is pretty well paced, for the most part. It does have quite a bit of filler, but even then, like sometimes, sometimes you just gotta not indulge too much. In it's masturbatory how these stories sometimes just indulge in themselves so much. Like the author is using this for therapy. And I'm like, keep that stuff to your Google Docs and your live journals, if that's even still a thing. And when you put a manga or an anime out there, uh, get to the point. <laughs> like, yeah. But that's me. Uh, well, pacing. I, I mean, I, I read a lot of um, manwas. Okay? Yeah. And manwas to me, other than you know, a couple of the really good ones that, that I've shared with you. Mm hmm tend to be awesome artwork, ignoring the dialogue in a lot of cases. There are some. There's a... The Lazy Lord Masters of Sword is really, really good. Yes. That's an example of one that does kind of go on and on, but it doesn't feel like it drags. I don't feel like that one is wasting time. I feel like that one really does have just a long tale to tell. It doesn't feel... Like, maybe I could see... Trimming a thing here or there, if it ever had an animated adaptation. Yep. And the, the whole other episode is how fans uh, get angry when animated adaptations change things, usually for the better, but mm -hmm. whatever. Um, well, the, but then we have some other ones like Release That Witch, which I'm intrigued by and I keep reading, but this thing is painfully so. And then fans of that are arguing about how this thing is breakneck compared to the light novels. Or the, the not light novels because I guess they were just regular novels yeah. in, in China where this thing was made. So I'm like, so you're telling me this already painfully slow thing is the fast version? Yeah. Of what is what must be the most glacial thing ever written? Like pretty much. I mean, solo leveling is not another good example for anybody who's watched the anime versus read the the manhwa. I mean, the anime gets to the point. Like I can honestly see the an the animators. I guess season two's rumored to be twenty six episodes. That means they need a third a third season with thirteen, with the breakneck pace and they're going with the anime. That's all they're going to need. And I, I good. Think, I think that's great. Like I I watched solo leveling, looking for how they were going to change things to make it better. And it didn't take big changes, just little things spaced here and there. You know, something in the background, like a TV broadcast with, you know, you see a character you're not going to see for a season or so. Bringing all that information in just made it so much of a tighter experience. The pacing was great. Things, I know I started this with, with Ranma, but I... I'm not looking forward to Ranma getting a re-release. Number one, it's one of those series that didn't have good pacing in either the manga or the god-awful anime, which is nine-tenths real filler. But on top of that, it, it's one of the genres I hate the most. The slap the guy around for, for doing nothing. Love Hina, Ranma, and a whole bunch of other animes of the time. Name five more. I would have to start looking things up. <laughs> but the fact is, is we were in for slapstick comedy almost at the time. But I think anybody who's been alive more than, I don't know, five years has moved beyond that sort of slapstick bullshit. It's not funny. I think it can be funny when the character 
isn't just around to be beaten up, but they also get their moments. Like, I don't know if you remember in Golden Boy. Oh, oh wow. Now there's an oldie. Like, yeah. that guy got beat up a lot, too. But it was always for a purpose. He had a mission plan, and he mm-hmm. would come out on top in the end. So it was more of a ruse than anything. Well, I mean, even if, if you want to go that way, great teach, teacher Onizuka. Which I've only seen a couple episodes of, but I do remember those those episodes were very much like that. They were very much... Yeah, I mean, he'd get slapped around, and then he'd get horrible revenge. Oh, because it, he's a former gangster, and you fucked with him. <laughs> he always got revenge if he got beat up by somebody. It always served a purpose, and you were going to pay. God, that that was the fudge of oldies there. Oh, man. Slayers, series one, two, and three. Those were pretty well paced. Had great pacing and were great, great shows. Season four and five were pretty much trash. I would argue that they're still well paced and that we don't dwell too much on wasting time. We get to the point soon enough. Uh, it wasn't as interesting as Slayers, Slayers, uh, what were the old seasons called? Slayers, Slayers Next, Slayers Try. Yeah. Then the new ones were called Slayers Revolution and Slayers Evolution R. Nice. Because Japanese people yep. title things are weird. Well, <laughs> but uh, I, I would argue the pacing on all of these is very good. Even counting that they included characters like Amelia and Zelganis, who in the manga are not anywhere near as important as mm-hmm. they are in the TV show. Um, whether or not the story paid off in a way I found satisfying, I guess that's that's up to you. I didn't find uh, Revolution or Evolution are terribly satisfying, but I don't think they were badly paced. Well, I mean... Could have done without the Fishman episodes. <laughs> and that's where I was going next as part of the joke, is I think the pacing was perfect for that episode once you hit the fast-forward button. I remember <laughs> you, me... And friends of the show, Poe and Kiki, were watching oh that episode I- 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 at my place. And at one point, we all looked tired. <laughs> I grabbed the remote, I started fast-forwarding, and nobody objected. <laughs> you just kept going, you look around, no one's saying anything. <laughs> I think when we got to the next episode, I think Kiki said thank you. Yeah, she did. <laughs> The worst kind of filler, the, the sort of filler that makes you want to fast forward. Okay, so maybe Slayers had some pacing issues. <laughs> I mean, I just think now that I think about it, there was an episode in season two where it was all men trying to influate a influence influate infiltrate a woman's only town, and they learned that everyone in the town was a man in drag, hoping they'd meet hot women. That wasn't really necessary. <laughs> It was kind of funny, though. It was. It was. So, yeah, okay, maybe there was some pacing issues here and there, but still a fantastic show. Folks, obviously this is a very subjective thing, so we really want to hear from you what you think about pacing in shows. Do you prefer a faster pace, a slower pace? Does it depend on the genre, the types of characters, the focus, whether it's live action or animated? Uh, Let us know. Go to... uh, TwoFatGuysTalk.com or Carlos and Dave AnimeRave.com or AnimeRave.xyz. We got some URLs you can yep. use. Uh, leave us a voice message or leave a comment on this video. Uh, Dave, sign off with some words of wisdom for our, 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 our three fans. Tune in next time. Okay, bye. Good words of wisdom. Tune in next time. Words of wisdom would be like, don't steal a car. I don't know, too. Next time is a good one simply because who knows what next time is going to be.